Hello everybody, Andrew Majewski here with Dental L Mobile Hygiene. So let's talk about do I make money as a mobile dental hygienist? Is it worth it? Okay, it's so much more than just simply saying, well, I used to work at a dental office, I make the same amount. Would I work at a dental office again? Would I not? This is so much more than that. So I can't really tell you guys why you should become a mobile dental hygienist. If you're thinking about it, if this is enticing to you, that's fantastic. Um, but then you might be thinking, but will I make enough money? Yes, you will. A common question people ask me all the time is, do you make more than you did working at a dental office? Yes, I do. But my situation was different. I have worked, or I used to work, sorry, part-time at a dental office for the longest time. I got out of full-time because I would come home exhausted. Dental hygiene, you guys, takes a lot out of you, not only because you're you know, hunched over, but because you're with people all day long. Dental hygienists are a certain type of person. We always want to make everybody happy, but often at the end of the day, we're not happy because all of our energy is so focused on making other people happy. So I worked part-time. So in my own um, mobile RDH practice now, I work full-time. So yes, of course, I'm going to make more money. I would not change anything. Me having to go back to work for somebody else now, I simply couldn't do it because I like having full control of all aspects of everything. I have full control of the patients who I see, when I see them, how long I see them. I never have to worry about being behind. I never have to worry about, well, now, do I have enough PPE? Well, I work for myself, so I make sure that I spend the money on the PPE that I need to keep myself safe and my patients safe. A lot of offices, um, or I should say a lot of dental hygienists who are working for offices are now saying that their office isn't giving them the proper PPE or enough PPE, or they have to pay for their own PPE. That's crazy. Um, so another reason why I love just simply working for myself is because I don't have to answer to anybody else. Not that that's a bad thing, you guys. Not everybody is made to work for themselves. It's true. Um, it's a lot of work, you guys. When I'm done seeing patients, I have at least several hours of paperwork, but that's because I see my patients during the day and then I do all of my notes, paperwork, um, putting the payment through, looking through insurance checks when I get home. If I had an assistant for that, it would be easier, but I just simply don't have that yet. Plus, I do accept assignment. So talking about money, if I didn't accept assignment, I would not have nearly as many patients as I have now, I just simply wouldn't. So I do accept assignment and that actually helps me make more money because I'm seeing more patients. When I first started my practice, I was probably seeing maybe two people a week on average. That's not a full-time income. Maybe one person a day on average, but that's still not a good enough income for me. So once I decided to start accepting assignment, and I did that because that's what people asked for. They would say, well, do I have to pay right away? I just simply don't have the money. So once I did start accepting assignment, I was getting more and more patients in. So yes, I make enough money um, if you do things properly. Um, which brings me to my next point. A lot of dental hygienists want to undercharge themselves because they think they have to get patients, they have to get the word out there that they're a mobile dental hygienist. So they might literally charge like $100 or less for a cleaning. Don't do that. Our work is hard. We're hunched over. As a mobile dental hygienist, you guys, we have to log in all of that equipment. We're our own business. It takes quite a person to have their own business. Patients should pay you for that. They're paying you for your experience. So don't charge $100 for a cleaning. I mean, unless their teeth are so amazing that you that you didn't do a lot of polish, scale, none of that. Well, that's one thing, right? But don't just say it's going to be $100 for everybody. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, two years old, 12 years old, 60 years old charge based on their deposits. And that's what I tell patients. I say, if you haven't been in for 10 years, it's gonna cost you more than somebody who comes in every six months because it will be harder work for me to do. Easier for you, easier for me, less money. So, you know, don't be 
nervous to, to tell that to patients and say, hey, if you want it less, then do a good job and then the cost is less. So if you charge properly, if you go by um, your Ontario fee guide or depending on where you live, of course, go by the fee guide. Don't charge under the fee guide because you shouldn't, you know, you just simply shouldn't. And if you can accept assignment, yes, it's more paperwork, but you, you absolutely should because you will get more patients, which means more money. So having your own business is amazing because again, everything you can do, whatever you want to do, when you want to do it, you're in full control. The best thing for me is I don't have to worry about being behind. I can talk to patients as much as I want. Um, when I book one patient, for example, I book two hours because I take an hour, a little bit longer for their new patient exam, but then it takes me time to set everything up and put everything away afterwards. So I book two hours. Let's say I'm seeing two patients in one household, I'll book three hours. If I'm seeing a two-year-old, okay, it might not take the full hour, but I will still book the full hour anyway. So that allows me time to clean up, set up all of that. When I talk about timing, I talk, I talk about the schedule in another video. So feel free to watch that. Um, I hope this helped. If you guys need anything, please let me know.